Do you remember libraries, places where books were valued and treasured and looked after? A time before the internet, before computers, and when notebooks were pieces of paper that were bound together, not electronic devices. Libraries were places where people went to learn, to inform themselves, and to read in quiet solitude. But most of our libraries today are gone, especially the old world amazing libraries. And today we're going to have a look at the old Cincinnati Library. Built in 1874 on the site reserved for an opera house, the old Cincinnati Library was a thing of wonder. With five levels of cast iron shelving, a fabulous foyer, checkerboard marble floors, and an atrium lit by a skylight ceiling, the place was breathtaking. But unfortunately for us, and for history and information, the magnificent maze of books is now lost forever. The old main library was once one of Cincinnati's most stunning buildings and one of the country's most beautiful public libraries. Now it's a parking garage. The building, which was torn down, was located at 629 Vine Street, Cincinnati. The heads of William Shakespeare, John Milton and Benjamin Franklin stood guard over the main entrance. It was completed in 1874 and originally intended to be an opera house before that project went bankrupt and the modestly sized building did not do justice to the magnitude and the beauty of the interior designed by architect J.W. McLaughlin. Built at a cost of $383,000, around $7 million today, this most magnificent public library in the country. The library was hailed the most magnificent public library in the country with a capacity for holding up to 300,000 books in its collection. So why wasn't this building saved from becoming a pile of rubble? When the end of the road came for the old main library, there was no resistance. No protests were organized, not even a letter to the board. Talks for a new library building had already begun 30 years prior when the collection had started to outgrow the building. Books were being stacked out of reach and the 19th century ventilation system was failing and the paint was peeling. Um, all good reasons to destroy a magnificent old world building, I am sure. A series of legal and financial problems, post-war inflation and squabbles over a new location Bought the old main building some time. However, as the plans for a new site dragged on, the old building suffered from overcrowding and increasing neglect during its last years. In January of 1955, a new library opened at 800 Vine Street. Revered for its contemporary design, the old building was sold to Lehman Corp for just under the equivalent of $100,000 today. And by June in that year, the magnificent library was lost forever. The three busts which once guarded the main entrance were the only original features of the building that were saved and placed in the new library's garden. And isn't this just the story that we hear all the time? That we have these amazing old world buildings with all the features, you know, the columns, the big, thick masonry walls, the skylights with lead light in them, cast iron features, spiral staircases, and all built in a magnificent way and all built with creativity and magnificence and built to a standard that we can't hardly even imagine today, let alone do or afford to do. And as I said, this building back in the 1800s cost $7 million. But then they just neglected it. And when the paint started peeling, they sold it for $100,000 and demolished it. And this is the story 
of our civilization. You can look in any city around the world and you will find that all the most magnificent, the epitome of the buildings have been destroyed. And the reasons they give us are just quite silly, really. And they all come down to neglect and, you know, that the building was getting a bit ugly. Like it, there's never any failure of the building itself. It's always some external reason, you know, that the facading or the look of it is, is out of date or some silly thing, but the buildings are always structurally sound. Yet people come along, those people with the tall hats who wish to rule us, and they destroy these buildings and replace them, as in this case, with things like car garages, car parks, silly, ugly, brutalistic architecture replaces the magnificence of the old world. And it is still going on today. And this really is the story of our civilization. The further we go back, the more amazing the cities become. So at the start of our civilization, which was probably in the 1800s, this cycle, everything was amazing and built to such a high standard. And there was creativity and function built into these structures. And what happened? For the last 200 years or so, the controllers of this world have spent their time and effort destroying these buildings. Yet they tell us that they built them. They take credit because they love their free masonry. They come in, they declare the buildings their own. They say that they were founded when we know that they were found and then they destroy them. So really what kind of people, what kind of civilization would build amazing structures and then destroy them? And many of these buildings, or so the story goes, only stood for 10, 20 years, some of them longer, but a lot of them were very, very brief as far as his story goes, as far as a narrative. And it's not even economically viable. And we know how much these controllers love their money. So it doesn't make any sense at all. As with this amazing library, it unfortunately could not stand the test of time. It could not stand the brutalism that came along to replace it because the people didn't understand what it was. They didn't understand that this was an amazing structure built by another civilization a previous advanced civilization that has been hidden from us, yet we see its remnants all around us. And, of course, we used to have books. People used to read. People used to spend time and think and imagine in their own minds. But now they want us to imagine what, what they want us to imagine. So they give us pictures on computer screens on mobile phones and on notebooks, which of course are not books at all. They are programming devices, closed circuitry. When the old world had open circuits, it was a worldwide circuit, a macro system. And now they are dragging us into their micro system. And we are now at the stage where we have AI and VR and they want us immersed in their version of reality. And why do they want that? And why do they want that? For control, to control your mind. And so why do these controllers do this? Take away books? Because when you read a book, you can come to your own conclusion. But when you play a video game or watch the news or spend your life scrolling through social media, you are told what to think. The option of thinking for yourself is taken away. 
and is turned into a program. It's a prison, a prison for your mind, as they say in the matrix, because that's ultimately where they want you, in a self-imposed prison. So get out there, see the world for what it really is, and educate yourself. Get a book and spend some time contemplating the meaning and the thoughts of others because going down this road of VR, closed circuitry and black screens can only lead us into a more solid and increasingly smaller prison. Remember in the end, nobody wins unless everybody wins. Come on!